Hello, welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be playing Witchwood. It is an exploration crafting game developed by Alien Trapped and published by White Thorn Games. The link is going to be in the description and they've kindly given me a key for the game. So I'm going to jump straight in, find out what it's all about and give you a couple of hours gameplay so you get an idea of how the game works. The Swamp. Once upon a time there lived an odd little witch in an odd little house. She spent most of her days tending to her odd little garden and resting in her odd little chair. On this day, however, her sleep is interrupted by an odd little noise. How odd. There are many odd things happening. Ma! Who's there? Let's get up. Oh, it's an interesting little house that we've got. Let's go interact with this goat. You devil! How dare you wake a young lady from her beauty sleep? Blah! Shoo, shoo! Get out of my house, you mindless beast! You're making a mess. With a swift kick in the rump, you boot the goat through the front door, and it is gone. When did this place get so cluttered? I could have sworn I swept the hearth just yesterday. First things first, my old grimoire must be around here somewhere. A new chapter. First things first, find your grimoire. Must be this thing over here. Aha, here it is. Hmm, it's lighter than I recall. Your grimoire contains all of your craftable recipes. You can open it anytime by pressing H. Open your grimoire. We don't have many recipes. All of my recipes are missing. That is what I thought. That damnable creature has chewed up all of the pages of my book. Well, how annoying. Where's my belt? Oh, we're not going to whip it, are you? I'll need it to carry my things if I'm going to confront the beast. I must have left it in that trunk over there. They've got a braided belt, an imp eye nut, some twine and seeker vine. Oof, my poor back. How long was I napping for? A good dose of medicine ought to soothe these aching bones before I head outside. At least I still have the recipe for my mending poultice. So we've got to collect ingredients to craft the mending poultice. Which is these. So we need two of them and one of them. Which just so happens to be in our house. Well, how convenient. So now then I can craft this. Oh no, we need another green thing, which is over here. So now we can craft it. Nice, and then we... Okay. We're done. So we're good to go outside. Right. Let's go outside and find this goat. I've grown yard. You step outside into a humid marsh and immediately stub your toe on a twisted root. That damn root. Ouch. Close your eyes for a wink and the next thing you know, the whole yard's gone to the weeds. Well, how long have we been asleep? We like sleeping beauty. Is that what's going on here? Somewhere in the distance, you can hear braying through the dense bramble. Where'd that cross-eyed Billy get to? He could at least put those gnashes to good use on this lawn. Press tab to open the map and get a better look at your surroundings. We can't see much. I, ooh, I wonder if it expands as we go along. Zoom out. The goat is there, so we need to go to the right for the goat. All right. Off we trot then, lady. Mind the house, love. Hello, Mr. Goat. Bah! Is that all you've got to say for yourself? Well, he is a goat. Bah! <clears throat> the goat coughs up a disgusting hairball. Ah, yes. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me now? Apologies, it's been so long since I've used a mortal vessel. Yuck, there's dirt in its mouth. Pwah, pwah. You can talk? Meh, of course I could talk. Has your mind become so filled with cobwebs that you've forgotten your old friend? You wound me, madam. It's good to see you up and about. I was beginning to wonder if you'd ever awaken. Though I suppose time flows strangely in this place. Anyway, I've come to collect. Do you have the amount we agreed upon? Amount? 
I'm with you on this, witch. What amount? Amount of what? Oh dear. If we really don't remember, we should go over the contract details again. Down there. Down where? The goat nods its head towards the ancient stone gateway looming nearby. This is like a story. Do sit down, children, and let's have a little story. And just how am I supposed to get through that solid rock? You're the one who sealed it last. Take a closer look, and I'm sure it will come back to you. Open your witch's eye to inspect objects and creatures and discover their weaknesses. Ooh. Open the witch's eye. A stone pillar. An unusually large standing stone wrapped with enchanted engravings. Its weakness is the unveiling powder. I don't know what that is, but okay. The goat, I'll help you out, trust me. Never trust anybody that says trust me. Recipe learnt. Ooh, fancy. So you uncover stuff and then it unlocks a recipe for you. Don't underestimate your senses, my dear. You may be old, rude, but you can see things others cannot. Hidden weaknesses lie in below the surface. Ah, I can see it now. There are shallow ruins etched onto the surface of the stone, but they are too faint for me to read. Any glasses, maybe? A powder of unveiling ought to do it. Oh, okay, so we need the, the powder instead. We could have gone with glasses. If you hadn't made a snack of my book, I wouldn't have to retranscribe my recipes. I shall not be held liable for any losses or inconveniences incurred as a result of abyssal possession. By inspecting objects and creatures, you can learn new recipes to craft in your grimoire. I think we've sort of learned that. We figured that one out, haven't we, guys? Craft an unveiling powder. So we're going to the book. And what do we need for that? We need a mushroom. Another one of these vine thingies. And we've got that. Okay, so we need another green vine. Ah, oh, these look like vines. Here we go. Boom. We'll pick up a few. What's this chest? Can we do anything with the chest? No. Right, so we can craft that bad boy. We can either click on it or hit F. Right, we've crafted it. Now what do you want me to do? Use an unveiling powder near the shrine door. Let's go back up there then. How do we use it? Shut up. Oh yeah. Right, mouse click. We've used it. The shrine entrance. You smear a handful of the glowing powder onto the ruins of the doorway. A cool blue light emanates from the glyphs and envelops the entrance in its aura. You squint, attempting to discern the meaning of the letters. They appear to be in some obscure runic alphabet. What gibberish is this? It looks like it was carved by a frightened hen. <laughs> hmm, it must be written in the umbral tongue. Allow me to translate. What a clever goat! The goat steps up to the doorway and pauses. Hmm, well, what does it say? The goat swings its shaggy head towards you. Dark, matted wool obscures the creature's beady eyes. I... I cannot see! Unbelievable. What help are you then? I didn't come here to help. I came to collect. Now do something about this mop of hair, would you? One little please would go a long way, goatee. Fine, fine. I think I have some rusty old shears down in the garden. In the chest? Oh, we can get in here now. Boom, we have the shears. Nice. Right, let's go cut the goat. I mean, trim the goat's hair. Yo, goatee. Snip. A quick snip. With much protesting and a nicked ear, you shear away clumps of dirty hair from the goat's eyes. Ah, much better. Oh my, why are you always this grotesque? That's just rude. Or is my memory failing me as well? Watch your tongue. Or I'll give it a good snip too. Well said, witch. Well said. Now, can you read the ruins or not? Ahem. Yes. Ahem. A space beneath, she sleeps alone. Tokens given up to the unknown. Fires of force shall unroot the stone. Braziers burn and await the crone. Crone? Who is it calling a crone? 
and what are these tokens I'm to burn? Perhaps you ought to take a closer look at those braziers. All right. That's these things. So we need to G. Some past contents have left a hard residue within. That's weakness is frog slime. The inside catches the light, just enough to suggest some past iridescence. So that's a shiny stone. So these have different weaknesses. This one's a blue feather. That's a dog hair. Dog hair, I've said that. Bird feather, frog slime and shiny stone. And I suppose you swallowed up any of those things while I was asleep. I don't think so. But feel free to sift through this creature's leavings. Oh, no. If you want to be completely sure. I think I'll pass on that one. However, there's a whole world outside this little swamp, you know. See that gateway over there? The one with the lovely green flame? The goat motions to the far side of your yard. I guess a brisk walk in the woods would do these creaky joints some good. Too much time indoors is bad for the humours. So we've got to gather ingredients to light the braziers, clear away to the forest. I'm guessing we have to go through some door, it said, didn't it? Can I just take these while I'm here? I don't know how much I can carry, but I'll take it until it tells me I can't. So how do I, oh, okay, I need to right click to use it. All right, right click to use something. Is this where we're going through? These old stones are tightly wrapped in innumerable vines, so we need to attack it with the shears. I got it, I got it, I understand that. Let's do it. Ooh, tangled vines. Snipping and tearing your shears make short work of the bramble. Not so rusty shears, then. So we need to step into the darkness. Are you people ready? Into the darkness we go. You cut your way through the remaining vines and suddenly step onto a cold stone day. Time seems to flow backwards, or maybe it speeds forwards. Ooh. An oppressive, star-filled void stretches as far as you can see, though there is no wind or sound in this void. Because it's a void, a warm fall breeze and the chirping of birds seizes your attention, so not quite a void then. A doorway. Ooh, what have we got here then? Back home. Ah, okay, so these are like little portals. And I'm assuming the one we have to go through is this shiny one. I'll take that, whatever it is. What is it? Oh, a, hearth, a hearth, hearth seed, a hearth seed. Oh, we go straight home with it. Oh, okay, nice. To the forest we go then. And here we are in the forest. How lovely. So what do we need? A blue feather. Oh look, here's a blue bird. Can we can we get the bird? A snap trap. So we need a snap trap to catch the bird. All right, so how do we get the snap trap? There's a question. Into the decay. Because <laughs> it makes me want to step into that, of course. I don't fancy going into the decay. So how do we make a snap trap? We need... What's this? Wicker wood. Ah, select. What does that? What does that do? Oh, okay. So to make the wicker wood, we need five of them and one of them. Well, we've got that. Boom. So then, we can now craft a snap trap. Look at this, people. I'm starting to get the hang of it. Lovely. So we've got a snap trap. We put the snap trap here. Do I have to like go near it? A little. Oh, I've put it down. I didn't mean to. Oh, now I've picked it up. I don't know how I did that or why, but hello, birdie. Let's put it here. Much better. Let's wait for the birds to come. Come along, birdie. Into the trap, please. No, oh, so close. Splat. Oh, it killed the poor little thing. It's harsh. What did we get? A meaty morsel. <laughs> oh, well, you know, needs must and all that. Oh, there's more. Hang on, there's more. Okay, we, d we might need it. Let's not waste it. What is this? It's a squirrel! Possesses an energy. Far outpaces. That's a snap trap as well, but we don't need a squirrel right now. We need a dog hair, frog slime, and a shiny stone. Who's this? Hello, lady. 
the woman spins around on her heels so quickly she nearly hits you with her spyglass. Are you startled me? Can't you see I'm busy with my scientific research? Research? What is it you're looking for with that contraption? Why, the famed indigo tufted forest lark! They're said to be native to this forest and this forest only. Have you seen one, perchance? You glance upwards at the small blue bird perched atop the oblivious woman's hat. <laughs> it's on her hat! I haven't. <gasps> We're a cheeky witch. Sorry. Shame, well, it's never too late to open one's eyes to the wonders of the natural world. You never know what you'll discover. She points at a nearby woodland critter stuffing its cheeks with seeds. Take that squirrel, for example. Spend a few moments watching its behaviour and you'll learn everything you need to know about it. Observation is key. I'm picking that up. We need to do the G. We have to G everything. Now, if you don't mind, I wouldn't want to miss making an exciting new discovery. It's on your hat, love. The bluebird glances vacantly at you before pooping on the brim of the woman's hat. Even the birds are taking their piss, love. That's hilarious. Go talk to this dude. He looks like, what's his name from um, Beauty and the Beast? Is it Sebastian? No, that was the... F oh, I'm getting confused now. The baddie, anyway. Whatever his name is. Kilman. Evening, ma'am. Come to check on the pottery? I'm afraid I just fired the kilns up, so there'll be a while. Uh, no. Pottery? Bah. I was just admiring the fine canine. Oh, it's a dog. We need the dog hair. You point to a scraggly-looking mutt patrolling the yard. May I give her a petting? Oh, you can try, but I wouldn't if you value your fingers. She's a touchy bitey today and doesn't much like people going near the ovens. I have a way with animals. Surely I can find something to calm her down. And it's telling us we have to press G. So it wants a sporific morsel and shears. Well, we have the, the shears. We don't have a sporific morsel, whatever that is. Let's have a look. A warm gobbit of... Gobbit? Is that a word? Of animal flesh soaked with sleeping magic. Useful against dogs. All right, so we need to put it to sleep. So we need something blue and some purpley mushrooms. So we can't do that yet then. Should we go and have a look? Should we, should we annoy the dog? Oh, it's a chest. We have the clay and we're stealing. We're stealing from the kilnsman. Mind the dog. Okay, we're all right. We're good. We just got woofed at. I cope with that. So we can't do that yet. We need um, some purpley-ish mushrooms and something else. Oh, hello. Who are you? What's the matter with this dude? It's crying. A well-wisher with an awfully long nose. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. I don't know about this. You tap the man's shoulder and he nearly tumbles headfirst into the well. Ah, what's the matter with you? I could have fallen in. Then perhaps you shouldn't be leaning over the edge like some wobbly stork. What's so interesting down this well anyways? Well, my grandpappy used to tell me that people drop all sorts of treasures down there. Just waiting for someone to dig it up. Got myself a trowel. <gasps> we need a trowel, don't we, for the dog? And I thought I'd give it a go. So can we just push him in? If we push him in, then we can take his trowel, right? Or is that a bit too sadistic? But the rope's out, and it looks awful dark and damp. I get goosebumps just thinking about all the ghoulies that might be lurking down there in the shadows. Ever consider that those ghoulies might get goosebumps thinking about you lurking up here in the sunlight? Uh, no. Not really. Not sure if that makes me feel any better about them, actually. Maybe the business of treasure hunting isn't for me after all. Could be right there, well wisher. You could be right. Here, why don't you take my trowel? Yes, please. Thank you. We will have the trowel. I don't think I'll be needing it. You can go down into the well and see those ghoulies yourself. Not sure. Do you want to go see some ghoulies? He offers you a small trowel. It looks like it's never been used. Well, we'll have that. Thank you. This old well is deep and dark. You might be able to climb down into it, but the rope has long since rotted away. Cool breeze wafts up from the darkness. What's this reedy twine? Can we just take that? Oh, I think that's what we had. How nice. 
You toss a length of strong homemade rope down into the darkness. It seems like it should support you without much fuss. Can we push him in? It's wimpy. We don't do wimpy. Let's push him in. How do we get him? Just click it. You just click it, people. And in we go. So here we are then. We're in the deep darkness of the well. This is a big old place. I've never been into a well. Are they all like this? Gold coin. We need a trowel. We have a trowel. Dig. Shiny stone. We've got the shiny stone. So all we need now is the dog hair and frog slime. I wonder if we can use this empty... Oh yeah, jar of water. We needed that as well, I think, for something, didn't we? Wasn't sure what it was, but it was a shiny blue thing and we needed it and now we've got it. Fabulous. There are no frogs. Oh, I see eyes, hello. Something stirs inside, but does not emerge. Can we get it with the trowel? No. Can we attack it with the scissors? No. It's just there looking at us. We have done the well. Time to leave. Oh, hello. Who are you? I talk to him. Woodsman. Are you there? Give me a hand, would you? No. Say please. Why have they all got big noses? The well wisher had a big nose, and now the woodsman's got a big nose. Maybe they're related. With what? You seem to have everything under control. These stumps aren't going anywhere. My darn useless son was supposed to help me, but he's wandered off again. Probably to go bother frogs and eat bugs or some such nonsense. Could he be the one at the well? Because he has a very long nose as well. Anyway, I need help clearing away some of these dead logs. It's late in the season and the wood has started to rot. Just be careful of the purple mushrooms that sometimes grow inside. We need those purple mushrooms. They'll make you powerful sleepy if you breathe in the spores. As much as I do love poisonous fungi, I'm not much of a lumberjack. Nonsense! Anyone can experience the joys of splitting a fine stump. Here, my boy won't be missing his hatchet. So the woodman spins a sharp looking hatchet in his hands and thrusts the handle at you. All right, let's go use the hatchet then on the lump of wood. Oh, and it gives us the mushrooms or the lethe cap. Nice. And we have a trowel, so let's dig this up. Which gives us campfire ember. Let's just get digging, love. We need to get more mushrooms. Yeah, baby. I think we've got what we need for the dog. Hello, doggy. So, we need to craft this. And then we can craft... Oh, no, we haven't got this. Wait, do we need that? No, we don't need that. So we can craft the spirific morsel. Is there anything else that the dog needed? Shears. Okay. We can do that. So then with the morsel, we're going to throw it there. Is the dog not going to notice his dog? Let's pick it up. There. Throw it. Get the shears. Snip. Snip. What do you mean that's all now? Take it all. Can we not take more? We went to a lot of hassle to get that. All right, let's dig up the garden then. I'd have taken more dog hair personally, but the game won't let me. So now we need is the frog slime before we can ignite those braziers. So let's go find some frogs. Oh, there's a dude with a frog. Perfect. Ragamuffin. Oi, lady, what's with that great stinking pot on your head? What's with that great stinking mop on your head? I would ask the same about all those stinking frogs in, ew, in your trousers. Oh, yeah, just jealous. Hmm, yeah, that's the word I would use, jealous. The boy fumbles between trying to wrangle all his frogs and swiping ineffectually at wayward fireflies with a shoddy looking bug net. Juggling a little more than you can handle, eh? What exactly are you hoping to accomplish flailing about like that? Are you daft? Me frogs are hungry, so I've got to catch some of these fireflies to feed them. 
He takes another wild swing, missing his target entirely. This frog does not look very happy. He's hungry. Feed your frog, boy. Why don't you let me take a few of those frogs off your hands for a moment? That would let you swing that net properly. I see what you're doing there, witch. That's very crafty. Very crafty. Oh, I see how it is. You're after me precious prizes. Well, how about I give you the net and you catch me some fireflies? Then maybe I'll think about trading you one of my froggies. Well, it would have to be a definite, not a maybe. The boy waggles the net in your face. Take it. What's this? Fairy dust. We caught a fairy and it turns to dust. That's quite groovy. I like this garden, these forests. How many do I have to catch? Is that all of them? Oh! Can we catch that? Chop. Can chop it. I feel bad. It's a changeling root. I don't know what it is, but it sounded like a child and I've just chopped it with my hatchet. Well, these hoppers aren't going to... What, what do you mean? What do you mean these hoppers are not going to stick around with empty bellies? The faster you catch this fireflies, the faster we can eat. I've caught a load. Uh, I mean, the frogs can eat. Ooh, he's going to eat the fireflies dirty. There go, let's see. The boy holds out an empty jar with holes poked in the lid. We've got five. Have them. The boy shakes the jar, rattling the captured insects like pennies in a piggy bank. Oh, these are nice and juicy. The lads are going to feast tonight. Now, about our deal. You agreed to trade me one of your pets there. Ha ha ha. What deal? I don't rem remember making no deal. A frog squirms out of the boy's overalls and plops down by his feet with a wet slap. You could just imagine it, can't you? You could just imagine it. Dang it. There goes Slippery Pete. He takes a clumsy swipe at the amphibian, but the creature squeezes out of his grasp and bounces into the underbrush. Ah, oh, shucks. I never liked him anyways. If you can catch him, he's all yours. Let's go catch a frog then, love. Boom. And there's our frog slime. Fabulous. Frog slime, blue feather, shiny stone and dog hair. That's all I need for those braziers. I should head back home now. Let's do it. Into the decay we go. And then back home. Now we have to open the shrine door by igniting the four braziers. The brazier awaits an offering. Have the frog slime. You gently squeeze the globs ew, of wet slime from your satchel into the basin. The mucus bubbles and pops before cold flames reduce it to a fine, odourless ash. This one? The brazier awaits an offering. Well, do it. Come on, have the shiny stone. You drop the stone into the basin with a resounding chiming sound. Fractures trace across the pebble before it cracks open and a cold green light swallows it within its flames. Have the blue feather. A strong force pulls the feather down into the large basin like a magnet. It bursts into a bright flash of light as cold flames engulf its essence. And the final and fourth one is the dog hair. Dog hairs take a moment to fall from your fingers, fluttering down into the basin one by one. The fur bristles into foul-smelling coils before erupting into a cold green flame. The emerald flames of the braces place strange shadows across the stone doorway. You watch as fingers of shadow crawl up the rock face and crack open the solid granite like stale bread. I really like how this game is written. It's like reading a book. A portion of it has left your imagination. I quite like that. The stone crumbles away into darkness, revealing a yawning stairway descending down into the cold earth. After you, madam. Let's go into the shrine then. There's a red carpet here. How lovely. Oh, Sleeping Beauty. A sleeping maiden. Encased inside a gilded crystal coffin lies the body of a young woman, though she sleeps in an enchanted slumber. Her ageless features express a deep sadness. 
sound of cloven hooves, here comes the goat. Echo against the marble floor as the goat comes to your side. Quite something, isn't she? Do you remember bringing her to me? I brought her to you. Why? Who is she? I haven't the faintest idea. All I know is you brought her lifeless form to my doorstep and begged me to save her soul. Save her from what? And why is she asleep? Why from the twelve wicked souls whom you said wronged her in life, villains who deceived her and cheated her and broke her spirit? And, as we agreed, here she will sleep until her contract is fulfilled, until you bring me those twelve wicked souls. What? I remember no such contract. To be fair, we don't remember a lot. Our pact is binding, regardless of what you do or do not remember. At the goat's words, you feel something hard and dark locked away in the depths of your heart. It speaks the truth. And just why should I do your bidding? Seems like a lot of bothersome trouble to me. What do I care about some sleeping beauty? Bring me the twelve souls, and I will release the sleeping maiden from her slumber. Our agreement will be fulfilled. Who knows? In time, you may even remember why you brought her to me in the first place. Or, you can simply return to the comfort of your little hovel. Well, that is rude, calling my house a hovel, but right now it seems quite appealing to return to my little home. Where you will waste away... <laughs> Oh, such a way with words, this goat. Where you will waste away until the weeds grow so thick that not even your shears will be able to cut you free. Now, all of a sudden, that does not sound so appealing to go back to our little home. And your mind will stay as empty as that grimoire of yours. But it is a big decision to make so hastily. Why don't you sleep on it? A heavy weight fills your marrow. Your eyelids flutter, barely able to stay open. What, what have you done to me? I, I can't stay awake. Who's put us to sleep? This is a naughty goat, a goat with magic, and we're back in our chair. Was it a dream? I suspect not. Good morning. I trust you've made up your mind. Will you collect the souls I've asked for, or would you prefer to stay stuck in this festering swamp? All right, all right. No need to get your horns in a twist. I'll do as you ask. You haven't given me much choice. That's a shame. I was hoping it was going to give you the choice because I'd have said no. And then I wanted to see what the game did. I don't have a choice. I've got to do it. Splendid. As it happens, I can already sense the first four souls we seek. Two are in the forest, another in the swamp to the north, and the last in the fields to the south. Could you be more specific? Near a shapely stump? Perhaps inside a tree with a face? By an overgrown mushroom grove? What do I look like? A compass? Go out there and look for yourselves. All right then. So there's a bear in the forest, an ox in the fields, a leech in the swamp, and a snake in the forest. So there's two in the forest. Do we do that? Should we do it in order? Makes sense to really do the bear first. Where would a bear be? Where there are caves? I don't know. Oh, hello. Oh, oh, I was going to read the sign. Never mind. Oh, what's going on here? Dingus! Oi, stop right where you are. Yeah, no one but soldiers are allowed into Lakeshore camp and you don't look like no soldier. Yeah, that's not a standard issued helmet. I just came to visit my uh, son. I don't think so. The captain said no visitors, so buzz off. Yeah, unless you're the quartermaster, you ain't getting in. Hey, where is that nervous wreck? Anyway, he ought to be back with a shipment of honey by now. Find the quartermaster in the forest, another hapless fellow, his cart in splinters at the southern edge of the forest. Back to the forest, so we know where we've got to end up. Ah, oh, this is like a broken down cart. And it is the quartermaster got a jelly bean for a nose oh hello there so, so sorry i think i managed to get most of this de de debris off the road looks like you've made a fine wreck what on earth happened to your cart yes well you see i was sent on a very important mission by order of my captain 
The bear. The captain is the bear. So it's not actually a bear, it's the nickname for somebody. The bear, you say? What sort of mission? It's my job to make sure the Lakeshore camp is well stocked with provisions, but most importantly, a steady supply of honey for the bear's favourite mead. I was just on my way back from the priory with a cart full when a deer or something darted out of nowhere. Jostled my poor mule so bad that she broke her bridle and ran off. My own heart nearly leapt out of my ribcage, piled the darn cart right into the ditch she did. Now every barrel is smashed and I can't bring myself to report back empty-handed. The bear will have my guts for garters, I'm sure of it. This bear sounds like quite a brute. Oh, you don't know half of it. If he doesn't get his honey mead, heads will roll. Maybe you could lend me a hand? Well, I can't very well put this broken cart back together. No, 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 nothing like that. But could you take a message to the sergeant of the Lakeshore camp? He's a reasonable fellow. Let him know what happened and maybe he can get me out of this bind. You can get to the Lakeshore camp if you follow the road. To, well, we know where it is. We've been there, so no worries. I need to stay with the cart and assess the damages. Oh, dear. Well, we could do that then, so... We can go and find the old sergeant. That's back this way. Hey, where do you think you're going? Yeah, we know. You've told us that no one but soldiers are allowed inside Lakeshore Camp. Get out of my way. I have urgent news of your quartermaster. I need to speak with your sergeant. Urgent? Only thing that's urgent is the line for the latrine. Or if the captain hasn't had his drink. That's right. Captain Bear is in a right foul mood. You can't come in unless you want a good thrashing. The guard almost has a shout over the clattering din coming from inside the camp. You heard him, it's dangerous in there. Wouldn't have the heart to let a frail old granny. These people are rude, like you near that beast. One guard turns to the other with a conspiratorial shrug. Yeah, but who are we to say what's good for her health? Oh yeah, you're right. We might be convinced to uh, look the other way if we were fairly compensated. Can we not just turn them into frogs or something? We are a witch, after all. Right, fairly compensated, of course. We'd be sticking our necks out, after all. Oh, we've got gold coins. There we go, have that. You carefully press three heavy gold coins into the palm of the waiting guard. There. I expect you two could divide them evenly amongst yourselves. Right. One for you and two for me. What? You mean two for me and one for you? I'm the one who does all the real guarding around here. You still owe me for that game of dice you lost. You cheated me. Give me them coins. The two guards fall into fisticuffs and roll into the bushes, leaving the gates to the camp wide open. In we go then. That looks like the bear. With an interesting hat on <laughs> his face. <laughs> As you cautiously approach, the bear drains the last of his enormous tankard and smashes it against the head of a nearby soldier, knocking the hapless man to the ground. And then I walloped him, just like that. So next time I catch any of you cowards turning tail, I'll skewer you like a fish and leave you guts for the girls. Suddenly noticing that his drink has gone dry, the bear bellows to the skies, more mead, you yellow-bellied worms! More drink! Bring me my delicious honey mead! The soldiers taking cover nearby exchanged nervous glances at each other. None wanted to confront the bear. There is no more honey mead. The bear wipes a strand of drool from his sagging lips and his bleary eyes follow, slowly focus on you. A mocking smirk splits his face as he waves at you with his great spiked mace. Say, now that's a funny-looking helmet, soldier. I ever tell you the time I crushed the bucket-headed barbarians of the Western Mountains? You decide that now is a good time to leave the bear to his ramblings rather than make yourself an unfortunate prop in his war stories. The bear kicks an empty tankard at you as you retreat back into the camp. That's right. Go get me more mead, you good-for-nothing slaggard. Ooh. 
Who's the sergeant? He looks like a sergeant. Oh, and he is. The frenetic looking officer shouts hurried orders at whoever will listen, but most of the camp soldiers are busy cowering or knocked out cold. Man the gates, you over there, secure the perimeter. We just need to hold out for a little longer. Sir, we're running out of men. Where's that damn shipment of honey? You step over an unconscious footman to address the man in charge. I might be able to answer that question. Who the... Who let this old bat into the camp? These guys are rude. They need to learn some manners. I found your quartermaster. He's having a bit of trouble on the road. I'm afraid your shipment isn't going to get here any time soon. What? Oh, curse my rusty britches. Without that honey and other supplies, we can't make the honey mead. The bear's going to flatten the whole camp when he finds out. Camp looks half flattened already. What's all this ruckus about? Well, the bear is the greatest warrior there ever was, which is grand and all when we're fighting the enemy. But once we set up camp, he likes to use us poor sods as playthings to reenact his conquests. And the only thing the bear loves as much as fighting is drinking. Guzzles up so much honey mead, we have to brew it right here in the camp just to keep up. He points to a squat looking device tucked near some tents. Portable brewery. Without that shipment of ingredients, I don't see how we can ever calm the bear down. He'll smash us all into paste before the sun sets. Let me take a look at this brewery of yours. If the bear is so in love with brawling and boozing, then perhaps it's about time he received a dose of his own medicine. Ooh, what are we going to do? There's a chest. Hang on. We'll just, we'll just take what we need. Right. What am I saying? I'm going to take it all. Oh, is this the brewery? You inspect the brass contraption. A tank here, a hopper there. The bitter smell of alcohol is infused into the well-worn metal. Despite the needlessly complicated dials and tubing, at the end of the day, the brewery is really just a fancy cauldron. This seems simple enough. I should be able to concoct just the potion for your troubles. The rattled sergeant shrugs his shoulders at you. Sure, if you think it will help, but you'll need to feel the darn thing first. Our supplies are a mess, so you'll have to figure it out on your own. Charming. You open up the brewery to inspect its complicated innards. So we need some water. We've got twigs, a cinder box. Ooh, what's a cinder box? We need, we need what's rodent lard so we need a rodent lard then basically before we can make this cinder box forest is the best place to go for a rodent he's still there dude give it up going to retrain into something else i wonder is your class a squirrel or is a rodent let's find a squirrel there Yes, a squirrel is a rodent. We've got rodent lard, guys. Nice. Cut that. Had a little bit of brainwave there. So now then, we can craft this. So what do we need now? We need water. Collect well water. So we've got to go down into the well, but we don't have any pots. We can craft pots, though. Look at that, we can craft pots with empty jars. So we need... Four? Yes, right, let's go into the well. Look at that, we're on it. Right, into the well we go. Let's get our water empty jar. We have five of them. Smash him. So now we can go back where the soldiers are. So this is a game, I'm guess guessing, of foraging for stuff, crafting stuff, and then I'm assuming there's some sort of battle because we've got hearts, so time will tell. It's like a baby, isn't it? Like a big baby. You open up the brewery to inspect its complicated innards. We've done that. So we've got the water, the twigs, the cinder box. You slosh cool, clear water into the brewery's main tank. Not the best base for potion brewing, but you want to preserve that honey mead flavour. You open up the brewery to inspect it. We've done that bit. Now we're putting the twigs. You snap kindling into pieces and scatter it into the bottom compartments of the brewery. Should be fuel enough for the job. And now we put in the cinder box. 
with the heat of a cinder box. You set the stove chamber of the brewery alight. It will bring the tank to a rolling boil. With a hiss of steam and the sound of boiling water, the rattling brewery is ready for the next step in the process. Of course, I'll need honey for the mead. The quartermaster said he was coming back from the apiary in the fields, so I best try there. So we've got to go to the fields. Then I'll need a proper magical binder and a token of the bear to seal the spell. Something in this camp ought to do the trick. The frothing basin of the brewery stands ready for the right ingredients. So we need honey, a metamorphosis elixir, a torn teddy bear. Alrighty, a torn teddy bear and some funny elixir stuff. Can we go in here? Oh, we can go in here now, look. The captain's tent. Through the open tent flap, you catch a glimpse of pillaged trinkets and treasures scattered about the spacious interior. You surmise that one of these precious objects might contain enough magical essence to use as a token of the bear. Your eyes have only a moment to linger upon the giant fur-lined bed before a hand pulls the door flap shut. The sergeant gives you a disapproving glare as he ushers you away. Dude, have a word with the sergeant. We're doing him a favour. Hey, you can't go in there. This is the bear's personal tent. You know the kind of hell that would break loose if he finds out someone's been snooping. Would it be a greater hell than if he doesn't get his mead? This is what I would say to the sergeant. Don't worry, I'll be careful. It seems like your men are keeping him distracted anyway. You glance over at the bear as he tosses aside a soldier like a sack of potatoes. No way, no how. If you think this is bad, just wait until he finds out there's no more honey mead. In which case, let me crack on with it, Sergeant. <laughs> if you're so afraid of that stomping brute, why don't you just slip away into the night? Surely it would prolong your life a little. And abandon all my friends. We soldiers got to stick together. It's our only chance. Only there was some way to stand up to the bear. A thought seems to cross the sergeant's mind as he notices the potions and baubles hanging around your belt. Say, you're good with magical doodads and what's-its, right? What if you made me some sort of protective charm or talisman? Then I could maybe have a chance against that monster without getting my head stoved in. If I make you a protective talisman, will you let me into this tent? I suppose I wouldn't have much to worry about if you did. So we have to make a protective talisman. Let's have a look at the old recipes. Is this the talisman? Right, so we need this red thing, which is a wicked gemstone, and we are missing more dog hair. Mamma mia. All right, so we need to go back to the dog. And we also need this, which is this, where we need dragonfly wing. We'll go to the swamp. Oh, I see. So we've got to... It's not just so straightforward. We've got to go to different parts. And the jar of milk from the fields. But we've got the fairy dust. Before we can progress any further here then, we need the protective talisman. So I think we go to the fields. Let's go to the fields then. Oh, hello. You swing. The oblivious charm of its clucking cousin, this fowl, is... Ab oh, it's aggressive. It's aggressive turkey and it needs digestive tablets. How do we make a digestive tablet? We need things from the swamp. I don't know what that is. Gobl goblin snot. <laughs> there are goblins in the forest. All right, let's not get distracted. Stay on mission. So we're looking for cows. Stay away from the turkeys. Find me some cows. Ooh, honey. We needed honey from there, didn't we? That was something that we needed. Although we've left the fields now, so... We've distracted ourselves a little bit. Hello, Mr. Beekeeper, or Mrs. Beekeeper, or Miss Beekeeper. Heidi ho I'm afraid we're closed for the season. Closed? But I need some of your honey right away. Sorry, our supply was cleaned out just a little while ago. Funny little man with a cart. You just missed him. Yes, I've met him. He's the quartermaster for the bear, but he had a bit of an accident on the road. I need to collect some more honey for the lakeshore camp. The bear? Well, that explains why the quartermaster purchased so dang much. I heard that the lumbering bully would steal the nectar from a larva if it'd suit him. 
My poor bees have already worked themselves half to death for that order and they don't have any honey left. I wish I could do something to help you, but the only honey left in the entire apiary is Her Majesty's personal reserve. Her Majesty? Why, my sweet spring flower, the jewel of my crown, the golden sun of my... Yes, yes, get on with it. My beloved queen, she is as lovely as she is wise and resides over her flowered kingdom. A shrill voice pierces the meadow and sells chill and sends chills down your spine. This is the queen bee. Slave, where is my dinner? I order you to bring me the finest sunflowers. Right away, my love. And make it pretty this time. I don't want another one of your dandelion bouquets like some common wasp. Oh, snooty queen bee. Yeah, yes, my sweet. Mm. I think I'd better have an audience with this queen myself. Where's she then? Speak to the queen. Would that be you? No. <gasps> the bees attack! What the hell? That cost me a heart. I thought they were friendly. Bees are meant to be friendly, dude. Sort your bees out. Generally well mannered, but can be quite hostile when irritated. I didn't irritate it at all. I just got near it. The damn thing attacked me. Queen Bee, the regal insect, looks down her curled nose at you scornfully. That fool beekeeper is supposed to stop the rabble from trampling my delicate garden. Good help is so hard to find, isn't it? And I suppose you've come to lend a hand? No, I don't think so. What do you want, little beetle? How rude! You seem like a very busy woman, so I won't waste your time. I need honey. Your best honey. She tilts her long neck back and lets out a buzzing laugh. Ah, 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 zzzz. Ha! Do you think I simply give my carefully cultivated riches to just any commoner? Do you have any idea how much time and energy is spent managing this colony? Everyone always wants something, but no one ever wants to work for it. In a rustle of petals, the beekeeper comes running over, holding out an assortment of beautiful prairie flowers. My darling sweetheart, I offer you the finest meadow flowers. I hope you find these to your liking. Is this... Is this marigold? You wax-brained fool, you know I despise the stuff. How many times must I repeat myself? Get out of my sight, all of you! My love, I have wronged you. Let me try again. You follow the beekeeper a short distance away while he busies himself picking more flowers. She seems to be in a foul mood. Does she always treat you like this? Well, yes. But it's really usually my own fault. Sometimes when she really gets her venom up, a little bit of smoke and soothing herbs calms her right down. Dude, I'd be putting that smoke and soothing herbs down all the time. Smoke, you say? I'm sure I could come up with something to even out her mood. Royal incense recipe. I'm a bit nervous. There's a bee around me. Do not sting me. I'm going to stay near you. So I want to read my recipe. Is this it? So we need that, which is that, which we can craft. Jolly good. And we need that stuff, which we can also craft. Even better. And the final thing is witch spice, which is also craftable. And we've got enough dubris for that too. That's nice and handy. So we can craft this royal incense. Nice. Which is this one? Yes. Have that. You sneak. Do you honestly believe that little puff of a chew smoke can... The queen fans herself slightly as the world begins to push and pull around her. Ooh, does anyone else feel a little hot? Anyways, as I was saying, you can't just... Just... Sparkling sun bears down on the queen, like a warm summer's embrace. My, look at all these beautiful colours. Have they always been so bright? The queen bee stretches her arms across the sea of flowers, 
brushing the tips of their petals gleefully. She arcs her limbs through the myriad of colours swirling about her head. It's gorgeous! Oh, oh, and what's that delicious smell? Cracking into the waxen walls of her hive, the queen pulls out a golden honeycomb. She proceeds to messily stuff the honeycomb into her face. Mm, delectable. Oh, it's so good. You simply have to try some, my dear. I've never tasted anything so delicious in my life. She offers up a sticky handful to you. Why, thank you, my queen. Brilliant. We got the honey. Happy days. So now we've collected the honey. We need the thingy from the fields, don't we? If I was to be Kipper, it's been emotional. We need the moo juice. What's going on down here? Who are you? Good day to ye. It just says good day. Don't know who that is, but okay. Got grain. Where are the cows? Who is that? Maybe I'm not, I can't talk to him yet. Ooh, what have we got over here? We talked to this dude. A vegetal farmer, a hefty gar a gold, stands before you wiping beads of dew off his bumpy forehead. He tilts up the brim of his hat and greets you with what you interpret as a smile. Welcome to my farm, stranger. What brings you out here? How's it growing, farmer? See what you did there, witch. Very funny. Oh, you know, not so bad. Trying my best to win the harvest competitions this year. Well, you look to be making good progress. I'm sure you'll be a shoo-in for the blue ribbon. You would think so, wouldn't you? But every year, without fail, that sour ox takes the prize. No matter how hard I work, I can't seem to outgrow his cops. Careful now. You're beginning to sound like a sore loser. Yeah, yeah. Not sore loser. I just think he's quite suspicious, don't you? Last year, the ox and his family grew the largest corn cobs I've ever seen. Just don't comment on my amazing accent. I was only barely able to get second place because of my own little helpers. He motions to animated turnips and potatoes busy with menial farm work. But this year, his crops are larger than ever before. Enough so if his family is nowhere to be seen. It doesn't make any sense to me. He's working the fields all by himself. What happened to his family? That's the fishy part. No one knows. They just disappeared one day and the ox has said nothing. Isn't the ox one of these spirits we have to catch? Or souls, or whatever you want to call it. Hmm, that does sound suspicious. Perhaps I go and ask him myself. Yeah, yeah, his farm is down the south west. You can't miss it. I must get back to work. Veggies won't grow themselves, you know. Could you point me in the direction of the cows? Unusual hay bale. Upon closer inspection, this mountain of hay appears to have been deliberately woven into an intricate wickerwork structure. You carefully pluck a single piece of straw from its centre and the whole bundle begins to swirl and unravel until a gaping vortex opens before you, as it would. Shadowed way. Ooh. Ooh. I hear cows! Gee, cows. Empty jar. Got it. Oh yeah. I want to get another one because I don't want to have to come here. How do I craft another one? We need some more of these. So we just go to the cow. Ah. Jar of milk. Nice. Well, the cow was going to attack me then. So now. No, we can't. We need to go to the swamp for a dragonfly wing. What was the map? We zoom out. Aha. Ah, oh, okay. So that's where this. That's okay, okay. It's pointing. It's pointing to. I like that. All right. So we've got low like waypoints as to where we need to go. So the swamp is north. Helpful for somebody like me who's absolutely useless at directions. Woo! What's that?
It's not friendly. Oh, ooh, it moves. We're being chased by a tree. Swamp. Right, so we're looking for dragonflies. And bug ichor. What is that? You have to bait it. A bait stick. I don't need that. I don't need it. Oh, Roger, it might be the bug, mightn't it? A poisonous newt. How do we make a bait stick? We need toxic thistles. Useful against dragonflies. Let's go find some toxic thistles. Thistle! Shears? Axe? Oh. Uh. What are we going to break? I'm so sure the shears would do it. Go away from me. Oh, it's coming. I want the thistle. Get away from me. We have to go this way. There's not much else. I've got to go past you, lady. Oh, no, we're not. We've got to talk to her. Who's there? My eyes have gone milky. Please come a little closer, sister. I don't believe we've met before. Why do you call me sister? I don't need sight to see someone who's also signed a dark contract. The woman looks blindly through you, though you can sense her focus. Contract? So you've had dealings with that damnable goat too. What sort of pact did he rope you into? Oh, you know how it is. I was young and he weren't no goat when I knew him. We used to dance naked under the blood moon and raise the dead to frighten dull country folk. Oh, some images I do not need in my head, and that is one of them. Ah, but it's ancient history now. Old age comes for us all, and eventually you've got to hang up the sacrificial dagger and settle down into the comforts of retirement. I know the feeling. I miss my cosy chair and little fireplace. It seems like a fine spot you've got here. Well, it's not all poses and pumpernickel. She clutches worriedly at the moth-eaten blanket in her lap. What's rattled your bones? Maybe I can help. It's my dear old husband. Handsome chap, although a bit clumsy. He had a tumble trying to weed out some swamp traps from the yard. Awful things like to snap at your toes when you're not looking. Anyway, he's twisted his ankle pretty bad and went off to the sick house to have a look at it. But that was a few days ago. He should have been back by now, and these legs haven't worked right in decades, so I can't even go and check up on him. I've been so worried, I even thought about making another contract. Don't you dare. You just wait here. I'll go find him and see what the bother is. Thank you, sister. The sick house is down the road to the west. Be careful of the critters along the way. They've got a taste for blood. Another new chapter. The leech. Somebody else. Right, so we want dragonflies and bug ichor. But there was a chest here. Wait a minute. Bug ichor, beautiful. How many bug ichors did we need? It was this one, so we need two more. Can we try a bait trap? We can. A bait stick, I should say. If I stick that there. And wait. Oh, it's questioning. What is it? Splat. Hey! Hey! Get off me! What did we get? We got Eye of Newt. Another Eye of Newt. Meaty morsel. Okay. We didn't. That didn't work. I didn't want that. Oh, thistle is nice. Ah, oh, bait stick. That's what I was doing, wasn't it? Yes, right. Newt's dragonflies. Newt's dragonflies. Do another one. a thistle what just twatted me with their stick oh my heart i'm down to one uh hang on i've got a healing potion haven't i i'm gonna heal my god i was not expecting that that was just rude i thought i was going for the thistle what is that it's a troll an impossible hulk unless perhaps he likes you i think he's gonna like us hello a fat troll sits squarely in the middle of the bridge, busy scratching an itch on his back with a fallen tree, as you do. His unmatched girth 
blocks the pave forward. Out of the way, you big galoot. That is not how to make friends, witch. He shifts his mass and releases a loud fart as you attempt to circumvent him. Woof. Fine. Keep your bridge. I'll come back when the vapours have dissipated. He ain't letting you go past. He don't like you because you're rude. That was rude, lady. Dragonfly. Bait stick. Nice. Move. Put it in the wrong place, but I'll take it. We've got the wing. Dragonflies are not dangerous. Okay. So, we can craft this bad boy. And then, to craft this one, we need to go back into the forest and get dryad fruit. Ooh, I wonder if it was on that tree. Remember that tree that tried to attack me? And the old lady will just have to wonder a little bit more about what's happened to her husband, because we're busy. That was down here, the talking, walking tree, wasn't it? Weaknesses of the logger's hatchet. What, so I just, like, attack it with my hatchet? Is that what you're saying? Uh. I can't hit it with my hatchet. No, now it's saying... Was I looking at the wrong thing? I was. I was looking at the wrong thing. This needs a cinder box. Why can't I craft it? <gasps> and it's the dragonflies. Right, so now then, we can craft the cinder box. And go and take on that um, thing with the dryad fruit. There he is. The Pinnock! There we go. Is that all I'm getting? <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> That's hilarious. It's rocking it. So that means then we can now craft this. So we've crafted the elixir, we've got the potion, we've got the honey. Right, so have the honey. We squeeze the honeycomb with our bare hands, thick, rich honey, quite like honey. Slowly oozes into the brewer's tank. Too sweet for your tastes, but then this potion is not for you. We need to put that in, do we? Okay. You ladle out a good portion of the writhing, tar-like substance into the brewery. To be safe, you add a little bit more, just for texture. We need to get into his tent. So he needs to have... Don't hide, love, don't hide. We're nearly there. He needs to have this. This will block the next thing to attack me. If I make you a protective talisman, right, we've done that. So, yes. That's right, have it. There you go. Here, this ought to shield you from harm, for a time. He grins nervously as he puts the charm around his neck. Then he clobbers himself in the face with his own fist. Don't do that, children. Wow, you weren't kidding. Ha ha, no, that's nowhere near the kind of punishment the bear can dish out. I better find some more stuff to test it out with. Then I'll give that bear a piece of my mind. He stumbles off into the camp to find other objects to try against his newfound protection, leaving the bear's tent unattended. In we go then. We'll have the teddy bear. We'll take it all, because the bear is a git. So now we can go over here. And we can put the teddy bear in. You pause before dropping the tattered plaything into the brewery. A glint in its button eye reminds you of something but the thought soon evaporates from your mind. You overturn your palm and the stuffed bear splashes down into the concoction. It floats sadly for a moment before becoming waterlogged and disappearing under the surface. With the addition of the final ingredient, the brewing equipment is sealed and set to work. 
Steam hisses from rivets and its swollen metal belly clanks and rattles. Before long, the waggling fingers of the gauges and the dial settle down, indicating that the brew is complete. You give a quick sniff test and recoil at the sickeningly sweet vapours. You push an empty wooden keg under the contraption spigot and crank the release valve. The brewery strains under the pressure and fills the keg with chunky, oozing fluid. May not be the finest honey mead around, but hopefully that great raging galoot won't stop to notice the difference. Give the mead to the bear. Or just pour it all over him. Ah, Captain, I've brought you more honey mead. The bear swipes at the tankard with his massive paw and tosses the contents into his slavering maw without hesitation. He licks his chops, savouring the peculiar flavour. With a sudden jerk, he bears down on you with suspicion. Say, this tastes kind of funny. What did you do, soldier? It's a uh, new recipe. I thought you might enjoy something with a little more sting in it. Rawr, you know I hate new things. I'll teach you to mess with my favourite brew, you hayseed. The bear is upon you with frightening speed. He raises the huge mace in his paw, skyward, and you brace for the impact. With an equal measure of speed, the sergeant leaps between the crushing mace and your head. You peer through your fingers. As a great clang resounds through the camp, the bear roars furiously as his blow is magically repelled from the sergeant's talisman. The mace goes spinning out of his paw and falls into the lake with a great splash. He gapes, dumbfounded as the sergeant stands before him, completely unharmed. Ha! That'll teach you to pick on us, you big oaf. This has been a long time coming. The sergeant wags his finger at the bear. Who do you think you are, huh? You think you're so big and tough with your fancy feather hat and your big honking club? Well, look at you now. Camp's soldiers gather to witness in stunned awe. Miraculously, the bear seems to shrink in the face of the sergeant's onslaught. If it was up to me, you'd be dishonourably discharged for disorderly conduct. You're a disgrace to the uniform. You're no captain of mine. So we're dishonourably discharging this bear for disorderly conduct. You're a disgrace to the uniform. You're no captain of mine. With fear welling up in his eyes, the bear shrinks and shrinks until he is reduced to the size of a small cat. And another thing, I, uh, what's happening? Oh, teddy bear. In place of the bear's drunken grimace is the stitched smile of a doll's grin. Two button eyes stare back at the disapproving faces surrounding the little plush toy. The sergeant takes a step back to reveal the small shape of a stuffed teddy bear where the brute once stood. Your transformative potion has finally done its work. Gee, I guess I overdid it. He scratches his head in befuddlement. That's a good word, isn't it? Befuddlement. But seems genuinely relieved. Hey, Sarge, I guess that means you're in charge now, right? Oh, yeah, I guess it does. Well, what are you all standing around for? The camp's a mess. Let's get to work. Collect the soul of the bear. We pick up the diminutive doll and brush some sand out of its fur. As you inspect it further, its head lolls to face you. Far within the glassy surface of his button eyes, you can barely make out a tiny crimson flame, the trapped soul of the bear. This ought to be what the old goat is after. I hope he's happy. Yay, we got the bear! Quest completed. Fabulous. So this is where I'm going to end today's recording. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that game. It was certainly great fun to play. I've put a link into the description. So hopefully if you're interested in playing the game, the link will help you locate where you can purchase it from. If you like the video, I'd appreciate it if you would hit that thumbs up for me. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's free and then you'll know when I next upload a video. If you like watching live streams, you can find me on YouTube. I also live stream on Twitch and I have a Facebook page and you'll find me hanging around in Twitter. 
The links to all of these I've popped into the description or you can go to www.mamasgaming.co.uk Until next time, I wish you all a fabulous rest of your day. Ciao for now.